Hey everyone, um, I just wanted to share a dream, a prophetic dream I had the other night and, um, and encourage some people through that dream. Um, in my dream, uh, I was in the, our backyard at our house. There's a little pond in our backyard. Um, but in the dream, the pond wasn't shallow and muddy like the pond is that's back there right now. Uh, it was really, really deep. Um, and it was cut out on the backside. The banks were very sharp and deep. And um, you could see the crevices in the bank and the embankment in the water, um, deep, deep, deep in the water. Um, and the water was super pure and it was light. It was like you could see perfectly everything in the water, like it was lighted. Um, and the bottom of the pond was um, on bedrock. Um, which is actually true where our pond is, we're on ledge, but the bottom of the pond was very, very, very deep and it was on bedrock. And um, in the pond, I was looking for fish and there were not many fish. Uh, there were just a couple of fish, not many. And uh, I could see one near the bottom and it seemed to have a line across its back where the, where the spine, where the fin goes. And uh, I was like, oh, that's odd. It seems like a little seam, like a little opening there. And then all of a sudden I saw um, a, a close image near the surface of uh, one of these fishes. And um, um, I'll give you, I got interpretation of the dream I'll give you afterwards. Um, so the fish was, um, you know, maybe uh, three or four inches long and it, kind of the shape of a sunfish, but it was more like a tropical fish with some really cool details, orange and black on the outside. But across the back where the fin is, it was open, almost almost like a, um, a pistachio nut looks like, a, an opening like that. And you could see perfectly inside of the fish. And there was absolutely nothing in the fish. It was hollow. There was a lot of room in the fish, except for there was one uh, fish that was inside. And it was uh, pure white and it was emitting light. And it was a really simple kind of elongated little fish inside of it and it could move around it could swim around inside of the body of this other fish it could move freely and um and as it would move uh to the right uh the fish the shell of the fish would move to the right as it would move to the left the shell of the fish would move to the left and then it went from that image to uh, somewhere indoors. I was indoors at a restaurant or a public place or something, and there was a very large aquarium there. And uh, the, the aquarium water was not very clean, and there were a lot of fish in it. And um, some of the fish were falling out of the aquarium onto the floor and flopping around. And they were fragile, small, fragile fish. They were very fragile fish. And um, they, would, they were flopping on the floor, and um, and my desire was to pick them up and put them back in the water. And I kept trying to put them back in the water. I kept trying to step over and people would interrupt me and people would stop me and get in the way. And there were other people that were actually pushing me back. And it was kind of strange. I just, with all my strength, I was trying to get to the fish and put them in the water. But some of them uh, on the floor were in the kind of the dust and they, they, they shriveled up and they died. They kind of curled up and died. And, um, and, uh, and then the Lord uh, gave me interpretation of the dream while I was in the dream. And he said that the, the pond represented um, the world and that in light of the number of people that there are in the world, there are not a lot of um, um, followers of Jesus who are running deep in the water. There's just not a large number of people who are in the deep water. And the, and the water that was lighted and pure and deep is the water of his word. And so there weren't a lot of fish that were swimming freely in the fullness of the water of his word. And... Um, um, the fish that he showed me that had the back open and you could see inside the bright white fish that was emitting light, um, that's the seed of his spirit. That's the Holy Spirit. And we're like fish in the water. And when the Holy Spirit, if we're, if we're sensitive to him and listening 
as the Holy Spirit leads us to one direction or the other direction, we move with him. Our outer body, our being, our personality, everything we are is like the shell of that fish that moves with the Holy Spirit. And the cool part was the fish was very, very simple. It was just a streamlined, simple fish. And the Lord told me that um, the Holy Spirit is, 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 is very simple. He's not flashy like the things of the world. He's, you know, he's, he's kind, he's humble, he's gentle. Um, there's a sweetness and a simplicity about the Holy Spirit um, that we need to know. And uh, just like Jesus came when, you know, they were expecting a king to come and all this glamour and all this splendor and all this power with armies on the earth, you know, that he would take over and overthrow, you know, the Romans and things. And the exact opposite was true. Jesus came in a lowly state. He, he emptied himself out. He was a servant. He was gentle. He was kind. He was, he was just lovely and, and very simple in, in his, his ministry. And uh, yet he changed the world. And so I felt like the Lord was saying, this is the same spirit that's in, in you who believe, who have the gift of the Holy Spirit. If, you need, if you're sensitive to him, he'll move you left and right to wherever you need to be in life. And, um, and and he'll do great works wherever you go. And so that was that part. The, the second part of the dream where um, the aquariums, the aquariums represented the limitations of uh, some of the, the, some of the doctrine that's being taught in um, churches in this world where um, there's a lot of unbelief and there's a lot of, um, there's just not a lot of people going really deep in the word uh, with the Lord sometimes, not every church, and I'm not bashing anybody here, but I'm just saying there's a lot of limitations. You know, the four walls, the church has become Christianity when it was never intended to be Christianity. Christianity is when we are transformed into the image and the likeness of Christ through his word and we follow Christ. As followers of Christ, we gather together. We don't forsake the gathering of the elect, but we gather together um to in love and in, and to to in love and good works to encourage each other in works of love and encourage each other and so anyway um the fish that were coming out of the aquarium um uh, the lord said are those um believers who have not gone deep in the word and they've fallen away from the church because of this pandemic and they're, they're not going to church because a lot of churches have have closed and because of that um they're they're spiritually shriveling up and drying up because they were being maintained from week to week with the word going to church on a regular basis but they've never really strengthened themselves um in a way where uh, they've learned how to go deeper in the word and nourish themselves and water themselves in the word. And, um, and, um, and the Lord was really, really sad about this. Um, in the dream, I wept bitterly, like uncontrollably. I wept and heaved bitterly. I still feel that just talking about it. And uh, I believe the Lord was showing me his heart and his, his grief for the people that have fallen away because they're not getting watered on a weekly basis. And I feel like what he was saying is, I, I really want, uh, if that's you, if, if you're someone who has felt the pressure and the strain of the world and got caught up in this pandemic and uh, that you know your church was your lifeline, um, that's a wonderful thing. But what I feel like the Lord is saying is, um, you can dive into the word and be in prayer and be in fellowship and communion with the Lord every day. You don't have to do it once a week. You don't have to wait for church every Sunday. And I think he's calling his body to draw onto him, to feed themselves, to grow up, to mature in Christ and learn how to feed on the word and learn to establish yourself in his spirit, the water of his spirit and the water of his word. And I believe this this pandemic, which, which has been tough for a lot of people, but in light of the first century Christians and the persecution and the difficulties that they went through, this is really nothing compared to that. And the Lord is saying, look, if it only takes something this mild to, and I'm not making light of difficulties people have had to deal with, but I'm just saying, 
You know, we're not being tortured. We're not being fed to the lions. We're not being crucified on crosses. We don't have a war inside our borders here. We don't have a famine inside our borders here. Um, we don't have a massive plague that's eradicating 30% of the population. There's none of that going on. This is just a, a flu virus that's gone through the country and people have, have, have been in fear. Um, and, but the Lord is saying, look, you know, I, I, I need people to understand that my word and watering of my word, you are responsible for and you need to seek me with all your heart. You need to seek me. And, and, and if you're really struggling right now and drying up and feeling spiritual empty, it's because you were relying on the church to feed you. And, and the Lord is saying, you need to learn how to feed yourself. You need to mature. You need to get past uh, the milk and, and start feeding on the word and get into the meat of the word and start becoming the word. And, uh, and go after the deep water. Go after the bright, clear, deep water that's available to each of us while we're here. And uh, establish yourself on that rock, the rock of Christ, um, the bedrock that's at the bottom of that pond that he showed me is the rock of Christ that we're all established on, the water of the word. He is the word. And so uh, I'm sharing this because I know God's heart is really, really saddened that so many have fallen away that so many people believe that the only way to God is to go back to the church. The church is awesome to build each other up and edify each other and build each other up in love and in good works. But if it's not available, it doesn't mean we have to shrivel up and die. It doesn't mean we have to spiritually be empty. And I believe God is calling us during this time to make use of this time to reaffirm and reestablish ourselves in discipline and a commitment to spend time with him each day, spend time with him in the word each night, each morning, prayers each morning and each night, maybe at lunchtime, pull your Bible out and feed on the word or, or get an audio Bible. And um, I use Audible, uh, the audio Bible from Audible and it's fantastic. It's really well done. And I, I'll go for walks and I'll just feed myself with that for an hour. Um, and any, any moment, any time I have, I'm trying to feed myself in the word and encourage myself and listen to videos on, online that stir me up and keep my fire going. And I, I get alone with God and my heart desires so much more with the Lord. I want to see so much more. I have such a hunger for him. And when I do that, my right becomes, my life becomes right. It just gets right. I have a peace and it just gets right. And so I'm encouraging you to do the same. If you're feeling dry, feeling withered, if you're feeling empty, there's a reason for it. And I hope this dream helped explain that. And I hope it encourages you to go after God, go into the world, word, uh, jump in, do what it takes. Start with a devotional, a daily devotional book if you need to, to prime the pump. That's what I had to do when I was young in the Lord. I had such a hard time getting into the word. I was getting fed every week just like that, but I couldn't get into the word on my own. So I bought daily devotionals. Max Lucado was an awesome daily devotional that I bought. He pub published and uh, I, it changed my life. I, I committed to, to five or 10 minutes a day and five or 10 minutes a day began to really prime the pump and give me a desire. Uh, Ryan, give me a desire to go deeper in the word. And um, I, I, honestly, I think daily devotionals saved my life. Um, and now I just love the word. I can't be without it. And uh, God leaves breadcrumbs every day in the word for me to, to eat and feed on. And it's phenomenal. It sustains me. And so, so I hope this encourages you. And those of you that are being watered and are in the word, uh, I hope that you'll uh, reach out with your hand to a fellow brother or sister that might be struggling or withering or having difficulty um, because the church is closed and they haven't been fed and they haven't been in service or whatever it might be. If you know of a relative or a friend or somebody, a brother, um, just give them a call, reach out to them, encourage them, maybe share this message with them and, um, and let's pray for them. Let's just pray for them. I'm going to pray right now. Father, I just so thank you that you would move mightily upon your church, your believers, that you would move mightily with a with a hunger for those people that are dry and that you would come to them 
in dreams and thoughts and visions, whatever it is that you want to do, Lord, come to them and inspire them to get back in the word and push back the trials of life, push back the things that are causing you to be separated from God and uh, have ruined your schedule of normal intimacy with him on a weekly basis. Why not use that for good? Why not use that for a springboard? And now, um, instead of going into communion with the Lord once a week, why don't you do it daily? Why don't you jump in the river with him daily? Jump in that pure, bright water of his word daily and be refreshed. Be totally refreshed and begin to do that and watch the water of the wood transform you and uh, fill you up and uh, give you all that God's called you to be uh, so that you can become all that he's called you to be. Uh, you need him. We have to be connected to the vine or we're not going to be watered. And the vine is his word. So anyway, I hope this blesses you. I hope this encourages you. Um, and I hope this uh, you'll, you'll reach out to somebody and pray with me for those who are feeling really dry and spiritually dying because um, they're not gathering anymore. God bless you. I love you and uh, be well. Take care.